Alright guys, I'm just going to make a quick one year on video about this DVR dash camera that I installed about a year ago or a year and a quarter to be exact I'm just going to show you what it's like after a year of use what changes I might have made, if any, what problems I might have had, if any whether it's still working or not and try and answer a few of your questions as well that you wrote in the comments and also just go through the menu give a better description of any of the options that I've learned what they do that I didn't know in my first video So if you remember, this was a really cheap dash camera, only about £30 or something like that, or a little bit less. It's got front and rear cameras, both are still recording just fine. But there are a few issues to note, a few minor niggles that I've had, that I'll explain now. The first thing I did to it, or changed, if you remember, when you start it up, I'll just turn the ignition on. This music, this music, if you remember, was really loud. And it was really annoying me. Just after a couple of days, it was really annoying me. So what I did... See, just above the camera, I just stuck a little bit of black electrical tape over the speaker holes to quiet the music down. And that quieted the music down quite a lot, actually. It doesn't really annoy me anymore. Before, it was really loud and really annoying, really obtrusive. Now it's quite quiet. So that's the first thing to change. Not a big deal, but just something I did. The second thing to note, on mine anyway, the clock seems to gain time. Not a lot, about two minutes a month, not a huge deal I know. But remember you can have the time recorded in the video as well, so it will show the time in the bottom corner of each video. So it's nice that that's correct should you have an incident. Also the clock doesn't seem to automatically adjust for daylight savings time either. So you have to remember to go and change it in the settings. At least on mine it doesn't. Seeing as the point of this is to record evidence of any incidents you have, then it's just better that if you have the time stamped in the corner that the time is actually correct. Although it actually shouldn't make any difference on a claim or anything like that, unless you're unlucky enough to have two identical crashes within a few minutes of each other, but it is just better that the time is correct. I'll show you how to adjust the time when I come to go through the menu. So the third thing I discovered, and this is very important to do, every now and again, just format your memory card. Go into the settings and format your memory card. This is because when it detects an impact, it protects any recordings. It'll not ever overwrite any of them recordings, any of those protected files, because it thinks you've had an accident and it's made to protect those files so it won't record over them. Eventually though, just through driving over speed bumps and potholes and things like that, it does detect these impacts. Especially if it's a pothole quite hard, or the speed bumps in some of the supermarkets are really vicious. It detects them as impacts and locks those files. Also as well, if you have it set, if it detects an impact while it's parked up, it will record those files as well. It'll turn itself on and record those files and protect those files. Like, it tends to happen to me a lot if I shut the car door too hard, it'll sense an impact for them and also record unlock those files out. It is a good thing that it does that, but you've got to remember, after months and months of doing this, there is a possibility that you can fill your memory card up of these protected files, and it won't ever erase any of those protected files, so you could fill your memory card up with them. It'll take quite a lot. But there is actually a strange quirk with the file size with this. If you have your cyclic record, that's how long each video length is, set to three minutes. Just for the front camera, each file size is roughly about 300 megs. But the weird thing is, if it does protect a video recording, sometimes those videos are only like 10 seconds long, but it still seems to take the same amount of space up as a three minute video, about 300 megs. Just having 10 of those, obviously you've got three gig use up there. I found this out the other day when I came to record this video for the first time and found my memory card was 90% full of these protected files and I wasn't recording more than five minutes of actual driving time. I found on a 16 gig memory card, I get about roughly an hour and a half worth of recording with the front and rear camera. Now there's a couple of things you can do to reduce your chances of your card filling up with these protected files. One way is to stop it making protected files. You can turn each option off, protected files while it's parked up, you can turn that off. I wouldn't recommend it, I'd keep it set. You can also turn it off from recording protected files while you're driving as well, but I wouldn't recommend that either. So if you have a crash, you don't want that file to be over-raced later if you're driving home, if you can drive home. 
But I'll show you how to turn them off when I come to go through the menu in a moment. But what I would recommend you did, on your cyclic recording, instead of having it set to three minutes per file, I've set mine down to one minute per video. So each video is one minute long, maximum. And when it records a one minute long video, they're only 100 megs. And when it records a protected file, even if it's 10 seconds, like I said before, if it were 10 seconds when it was set to three minutes, it was 300 meg file. If it's set to one, it's only going to take up a minute's worth of video. So 10 seconds will still be 100 meg. In other words, you can get three times as more protected files on your memory card before it'll fill it. So I'd recommend altering your file sizes down to one minute cyclic recording. And I'll show you how to do that in the menu in a moment too. So the final thing with this, I'll just talk about the internal battery. The internal battery on this is crap. It's absolutely crap, the internal battery. I mean, it's working, but barely. When it was new, it wasn't great anyway. I mean, it's don't get me wrong, it's not supposed to be recording on battery when you turn the car off anyway. Well, it is, but it's made for emergencies. I'll explain that in a moment too when I get to the frequently asked questions. But what it is, it's not made for continuous recording. When it was new, it was only supposed to be able to record for up to 30 minutes anyway on battery. I think mine would do about 20. It never reached 100% charge, maybe 90%. Nah, it's lucky if I get past 50%, even if I've been driving for hours. And if you're in it on battery, after about five minutes, it's dead. Basically, the battery's dying. The battery's rubbish. The battery's absolutely crap. If you ever found a way, well, I've never looked, but... Maybe there's a way you can open it and change the battery. If I ever did that, I would post that online. But the battery is crap. Right, so now I'm just going to quickly run through the menu, show you what I've learned in the last year of use. Because in my first video, I didn't know what a lot of the options did, to be honest. They don't come with any instructions, and they're not quite obvious what a lot of the options in the settings actually do. Now, I haven't actually spent much time in the settings myself, which is actually a good thing if you think about it. It means I haven't had any problems on having to go into the settings and figure out what this and that does. The only times I've really been in the settings is when you guys have asked me questions in the comments and I've come down to figure out what it actually does. So first thing we've got to do is turn it on. As though we're turning the car on, I'll just turn the car's ignition on. And it boots up as though we're driving. Still instantly starts recording. And this is why I've not been in the menu much because Basically, it's ideal. Just switch the car on, go, and forget about it. I'll just go through the settings now. Now, to go through the settings, this one is the settings button. If you press it, nothing will happen because it's recording. It thinks you're driving, you're recording. The first thing you've got to do is press OK to stop it from recording. And then this one here, is next to the power button is the menu button that's to focus on the reflection so i might have to do it at this angle so the first option is pretty self-explanatory resolution keep it at the highest 1080p photo quality if you want to take a photo keep it at the highest which is 3 million cyclic recording is what I was talking about earlier, where you can choose the size of your files or the length of each video, one, two, or three minutes, set it at one minute. Next, we've got the date stamp. If you have that ticked, that will make it record the, day, the time and date in the bottom corner on your videos. I recommend having that switched on. Language, choose your language, obviously. LCD brightness. Now this, LCD brightness, it's a funny wording, but that is actually your timer for the screen automatically turning off. If you want it to automatically turn off, which I strongly recommend you do. I've got mine set at 20 seconds on the screen. There you go, automatically turns off after 20 seconds. It does that while you're recording and keeps recording. You can set it to 10, 20 or 30 seconds. If you turn it off, the screen will just stay on all the time unless you set it to turn off manually by pressing the power button like that so if we go back to the menu so lcd brightness is actually the timer for the screen auto power off which you would think is for turning the screen off i haven't got a clue what that does if anyone knows what that does write it in the comments 
I've got it set off. Obviously, I wouldn't want the unit turning off. I don't know. Recording, that's audio recording, so it's recording your voice inside the car. Beep sound, you've got to turn that off, it's so annoying. If I turn it on, it makes a noise every time you press a button. Parking guard. Now, I thought that was the lines on the rear camera. What it actually is, that is the system for detecting the impact where it's parked up. If your car is parked and it's turned off, it'll record a file. For example, if I turn the car off, the unit turns itself off, and now it's, it's off, and say your car is thumped in the car park, for example, I've just banged on the windscreen. I don't want to do it too hard. See, it sends an impact and it boots up on battery, records, and you see the lock. That means it's a protected file as well. So now it's just recording. And then it'll switch off after a few seconds. That's the screen that's turned off and now it shuts down. So what that did, that sensed your car was hit while it was parked up, powered itself up on battery and recorded the file. Just turn it back on. So that is your parking guard. Going back to what I said earlier, if you wanted to save, if you wanted to save space on your memory card to reduce the amount of protected files, you'd turn that off. Go back to menu, you've got to stop it from recording. Press menu. We go down to parking guard. If you take that off, it will no longer do that. If I turn it off. I'm not going to thump on my windscreen very hard. But if I turn that off. If I just bang on my windscreen. I'm not doing it very hard, by the way. You see, it won't ever record. That is your parking guard. So if you want to save space, turn that off, but I'd recommend you keep it turned on and just format your memory card every now and again to free up those protected files. So I've just turned my car back on, stop it recording, press menu button. And by the way, someone asked in the comments, you see this eye we align through it? Someone thought that was night vision. That is actually your parking guard symbol, whether it's on or off. If you go down to parking guard, turn it back on, the eye has now no longer got a line through it. It's the same with the audio as well. If I turn that off, you see how it's got a line through it. So that is your parking guard. It records impact while it's parked up and your car turned off. Now gravity sensing. This is another one that makes protected files. This makes protected file when it sends an impact while it's turned on. Like if you're in a crash, it'll protect that file. You can set the sensitivity of it, low, medium or high. So I've got it on low and even low. When I go over speed bumps uh, and potholes, it will often, it will often record a protected file because it's detected an impact. Now you can turn that off if you don't want to save all these files from potholes and things like that. But I would strongly recommend against that and keep it turned on. So if you're driving home, if you had a little knock or someone's driven into the back of you while you're at the lights, for example, while you're driving home, it won't record over your video. You have a knock, you've saved it, you've saved the evidence and it records over it. You don't want that. So I'd suggest you keep protected files turned on by keeping gravity sensing turned on. Boot video. I have no idea still what boot video does. No one's asked me what it does. I've turned it off, I've turned it on, and I haven't figured out what it does. If anyone knows what that does, feel free to tell me. Nothing changes in the symbols either, as you can see. White balance, just leave that auto. Self-explanatory exposure, self-explanatory, leave it like that. Frequency, if you're in Europe, leave it at 58. If you're in the US, leave it at 60. Even then, it's not a big deal. It's just for the flicker of the screen, basically. 
motion detection. So I don't know what that does. You see, if I untick it, the little man disappears next to the eye. But I don't know what it does. Sorry, guys. Still haven't figured that one out. If anyone knows what it does, I don't know if it's anything to do with protected files. I don't know. Don't know what it does. WDR, I don't know what that does, but someone wrote in the comments that it's actually for your night vision. Well, mine hasn't got night vision anyway, so whether I have it turned on or turned off, it doesn't do anything on mine. Some of those rear cameras, you know, the square ones, it looks like they've got four infrared lights in the corners. Maybe it's for them, but for mine, it doesn't seem to do anything. Date time. This is where you set your date and time, pretty obvious. Every now and again, Oops, I have to set mine. Do I do it? I think. Also, I press the what looks like a flower. What time is it? 31.30. So it's about right. I think I set it a couple of days ago when I recorded this video for the first time. Take about a month. Actually, if you look in the top corner there, it says 26. Which is a bit quirky. Format. So this is where you format your card, and this is what I recommend you do every now and again. I did mine the other day. Click and then click all day. Okay, and you'll format it. I'll just do it now. Formatting. That's it. Default setting just puts everything back to default as you'd expect. Version, just your version number of the software, it's no big deal. So that's the menu that I know up to now. Obviously there's a couple of options I still don't know what to do. If you know what they do, post it in the comments. But it's nothing that I know that I'm needing. But I have figured out some that I didn't know before. Keep your cyclic recording to one minute, it's better. Keep your date stamp on. This is what I recommend. I keep my LCD brightness about 20 seconds. 10 just seems too short, 30 takes ages before it goes off. Auto power, I haven't got a clue what that does, I'll leave it turned off. Audio recording inside, beep sound turned off. Parking guard turned on for your protected files while it's parked up. Gravity sensing set low, but on. That protected files while you're driving, in case you have an impact. Boot video, no idea what it does. Light balance and all the rest. Motion detection, no idea what it does. WDO, supposedly night vision, I, I don't know what it does. Date time, format. I'll, also, I'll just go through um, some of the buttons as well. What to do on the bottom, because it can be a bit confusing as well, they're just symbols. Power button, if you just press it short, you turn the screen off. If you're recording, it's taking forever to go off, you can just press it, or if you've set it to not go off, just press the button. This is the menu, to go to menu. If you're recording, menu won't do anything. So if you want to go into the menu, if you notice you're recording, Press OK first to stop it recording. And then you can get into your menu. When you're not recording, I'm not sure. Okay, while you're recording, you see if you press the flower button while you're recording, the little lock symbol comes on the screen. What you've done, you've protected that file manually. If someone cuts you up, or you nearly had a crash and didn't detect it, if you just press the flower button, you've protected that file. And it also protects the rear camera as well. The screen goes off after 20 seconds automatically like that. If you press the power button, it's back on. If you want to turn the whole unit off manually, not just turn the screen off, hold the button down for a few seconds and you turn it off manually. Same, you can start it back up manually by holding the power button, even when it's on battery. And it'll start recording, you see? Let's say someone's cut me up and I want to save the file, just press the flower and I've locked that file. If I press OK, I've stopped it recording and I can get into the menu. If I press the flower button while it's not recording, I get two options. I get this one, this is for the photographs. I can actually take a still image, if I press OK. You hear the noise there? I'll do it again, the car's going past. OK, 
Okay, a still image, press the flower again. I can view. My recordings. I've just formatted my card, so I can't play my driving. But you can see I've recorded while I've been sat here. So you can play back your files. And you see that one has got the lock. It'll never record over that one because I've protected that file. And I'll go back to that. Now the arrows, obviously, they go through the selection, but the arrows also do other things while it's just in view. Pressing this one, you can change which camera is displayed on the screen. So I've just got the forward showing. Now I've just got the rear showing. Now I've got both with the big one forward and the small one rear. This one is the big screen is rear and the small camera in the corner is forward. This we're pressing left. Or forward only, rear only, or as I keep it, the big one is forward and the small one is rear. And doesn't matter, that's just for the display. It's still recording front and rear all the time, whichever one you have displayed. And when you just press right, it just switches off the internal audio recording. Then OK, starts it recording again. You can still change the views while it's recording. Alright, now I'll just go through some of the frequently asked questions that you guys wrote in comments.